Welcome, I'm Brad Fraser. I'm Spencer Shunk. And this is Old Movies for Young People. Today we're talking about a couple of films that were released about 40 years apart. One is Gentlemen Prefer Blonde from 1953, and the other is Bound from 1996. Gentlemen Prefer Blondes is a well-known property. It was a huge Broadway show well before it was ever made into a movie. It made Carol Channing into a star and she was able to tour it for the next 300 years. However, as often is the case with Broadway shows, when they wanted to make the movie version, the Broadway star didn't cut it. So, the part went to Marilyn Monroe. Directed by Howard Hawks, also featuring uh, Jane Russell, Tommy Noonan, and Charles Coburn. It's a lark, it's a musical, and it's a lot of fun. The plot is very simple. Two women, best friends, one uh, Lorelai Lee, a uh, not tremendously bright and yet maybe the brightest person in the room, little gold digger, a uh, showgirl, and her best friend Dorothy Shaw, who's played by Jane Russell. What's the rush? He's not going to run away. I know, but I just can't wait. For what? Dorothy. Didn't you notice? His pocket was bulging. Yeah, that could be a bag of gumdrops. No, it was a square bulge, like a box for a ring. I think he's got a present for me. You know, I think you're the only girl in the world that can stand on a stage with a spotlight in her eye and still see a diamond inside a man's pocket. The women have decided to take a tour of Europe. Lorelai Lee is searching for men who have money. She's always interested in diamonds. She's always trying to turn things to her favor. And Jane Russell plays a much more common sense, hard-hitting woman who's not interested in anything but love, certainly not money, and only barely interested in men in terms of marriage. However, Marilyn's nebbish fiancé's father has decided that Marilyn is a problem, has no place in his family, and hires a private detective to accompany them on the trip to get incriminating evidence on the gold digger. They don't know this, and Jane begins to develop a relationship with the detective as he watches Marilyn, while Marilyn develops a friendship with an older rich man whose countess wife wears tiaras and diamonds everywhere. No, no, my dear, she's quite right. Like so. It's a tiara. <laughs> you do wear it on your head. I just love finding new places to wear diamonds. There's the music. You'll excuse me, my dear. Miss Lee has promised me this next dance. Charles Coburn, the millionaire, takes a very strong interest in Marilyn. One day when they're alone together, he decides to show her how an anaconda squeezes the life out of a poor little deer. And of course, the private detective gets pictures of it and sends it back to Tommy Noonan's father, creating trouble for everyone. When they arrive in Paris, they find that uh, Lorelai's letter of credit has been rescinded, the engagement is off, and they're high and dry in a country they don't even speak the language in. I represent the Suffolk and Greater London Insurance Company. Well, thank you ever so. I never buy insurance. Sell it to Mr. Malone. He needs it in the business he's in. What is all this? Young woman, if you return the tiara, I'm willing to forget this squalid incident. Uh, allow me to clarify, my lady. A Lady Beekman's tiara, which is insured with my company, has been reported as stolen. What's that got to do with us? Uh, we've been informed. It's in your possession. Luckily, they are very resourceful women, and before long, they're entertaining in a club. They have a whole new list of suitors. And then Marilyn's fiancé shows up at the last and worst possible minute. And because she's Marilyn Monroe, and so beautiful and beguiling, she manages to turn the father around. Don't you know that a man being rich is like a girl being pretty? You might not marry a girl just because she's pretty, but my goodness, doesn't it help? And if you had a daughter, wouldn't you rather she didn't marry a poor man? Say, they told me you were stupid. Dorothy forgives the private detective who she thought was using her to get to Maryland, and it ends with a beautiful double wedding. And we have Bound, 1996. It's actually the directorial debut of Lana and Lily Wachowski, then the Wachowski brothers. They wrote and directed the film. It stars an awesome main cast. We've got Jennifer Tilly as Violet, who is a sort of kept wife of a mobster, very beautiful and seductive. We have Gina Gershon as Corky, an ex-con, who is now a plumber working on the empty apartment next door to Violet's. And then we have Joey Pants, Joe Pantoliano, playing just an awesome part as Caesar, who is the mobster husband of Violet. Basically what happens is uh, Corky is working on this apartment next door. She catches Violet's eye. Violet decides that uh, she's interested in Corky. She uh, loses something down her drain as a pretext for the superintendent to send Corky to the apartment. She seduces Corky. Thanks. You seem uncomfortable. Do I make you nervous, Corky? No. 
thirsty, maybe. Curious, maybe. That's funny. I'm feeling a little bit curious myself. And what we get at the beginning is basically uh, an erotic lesbian thriller, but then it takes a left turn and turns into a caper film. The women uh, get wind of a plot. Uh, this guy named Shelly, he is about to steal a bunch of mob money. Him and Violet are going to make off with it together, but the mobsters catch Shelly. Fuck me! No! Hey, for I'm sorry, home. don't! We're going home, you piece of shit! Nobody! I'm not fucking nope. I'm nervous! I no, swear. no, no! I'm Johnny! Please. He's making too much noise. And Caesar ends up holding this whole briefcase of money covered in blood, which he has to wash off one bill at a time, in their apartment, waiting for the mob boss to come and pick it up. Violet obviously knows this, and she enlists Corky to help her out on a scheme to steal all the money. Has Gino ever been to your place before? Yeah, twice before. What happened? Well, Caesar was really nervous. He kept cleaning the apartment. Um, the first time he picked out the dress he wanted me to wear. Did Johnny ever hit on you? Oh, Johnny hits on me all the time. He hits on anything in high heels. Did Caesar ever see this? He does it right in front of him. <laughs> oh, this is getting better and better. They make the money disappear. Caesar goes into a rage, ends up killing Johnny, his father, the mob boss, Gino Marzoni, and one of the henchmen. Only then does he discover he's been played by the women. Turn around. You? Holy fucking Christ. <laughs> you gotta be fucking kidding me. It turns into a cat and mouse game, the two women versus Caesar, as they try to figure out a way to get that money and escape with their lives in what I think I would call the queerest mob movie ever made. We have had some controversy about teaming these two movies together. Uh, uh, Spencer really wanted to team Bound with uh, the the Maltese, Maltese Falcon because he felt they were both more caper flicks. And I felt they're both more female buddy flicks and that we'd get a lot more mileage out about talking about the relationships of the women to one another. Sounded like a challenge, so I accepted. In one film, we have Marilyn Monroe and Jane Russell playing two women who understand their power, who understand how to get what they want out of men, and who are going to get everything out of life they can. In the other movie, we have two women who are independent, who are aware of their power. One of them is more into men than the other one is, and they too have an agenda. My sticking point is, if you tried to sell me Gentlemen Prefer Blondes as a caper film, and then I went to watch it, I would be pretty disappointed. There is a a correlation for me between uh, Gina Gershon's kind of common sense sort of Jean's more like what Jane. are you doing and Jean is very much like Jane and Jennifer Tilly with her soft whispery voice is very much like Marilyn Monroe. The sexuality of all four women in both of these movies is very clear, it's not stepped away from and it's actually quite sophisticated in the way that it's dealt with in the writing and in the, in the performances. Sure, I think one is a lot more erotic than the other, and I, that's the obvious one for me. Is it, well, yeah, but if you look at the context of 1953, the, the men who are going to see Gentlemen Prefer Blondes are not going to see the Jack Cole choreography. As long as the guy's a millionaire For a kid from a small street I did very well on Wall Street Though I never owned a share but I also have to say Bound, and I'm a gay guy, this movie gave me a boner. Like, I have never in my life wanted so bad for someone to lick their finger and put it up my skirt and touch my labia. Like, never. That scene makes me horny every time I see it. And I don't judge either of the characters for what they do. You're not that different, Corky. Ah, let's see. This is the part where you tell me what matters is on the inside. And that inside of you... There's a little dyke just like me. No, she's nothing like you. She's a whole lot smarter than you are. Is that what her daddy tells her? I know what I am. I don't have to have it tattooed on my shoulder. I don't they think win. you can um, say that uh, Gentlemen Prefer Blondes is less queer than Bound. It's just queer in another way. It is a very queer film, whether it's the two women who are mm. appearing in it, who are gay icons, 
whether it's the musical numbers, the, the is anybody here for love that Jane sings to the, uh, the U.S. Olympic team as That's they all ignore her number. and act like a gay bar is going on in yeah. the background. I'm apathetic and non-athletic. Can't keep up in a marathon. I need some shoulder to lean upon and a couple of arms to hold me. Ain't there anyone here for I wonder if Howard Hawks, who was kind of a manly director, and they talk about the Hawksian uh, independent, strong-willed woman and that kind of thing. I mean, you know, if you have Jack Cole giving the thing its sort of gay text and you've got Howard Hawks giving it that kind of straightforward, direct, you're a woman but you still express yourself like a man kind of thing he has going on with a lot of his actresses, that creates a really interesting dynamic yeah, it does. between the, the straight thing and the, and the queer thing kind of pulling at each other, which is subtext but which is made uh, uh, text in Bound. Totally, yeah. We should also say, I don't know if we really hit on this, how much of a twisty, turny plot Bound has and how it continually yes. surprises for like the last half of the movie at least. Something new, some huge change happens just about every five or ten minutes and keeps you really on the edge of your seat. Yeah, it really does. It's, a, it's an excellent noir. It's mm. one of the best noir mm -hmm. films ever made. It's one of the best caper films ever made and it's seriously underrated. Like yes. I have hard time believing people don't know this movie mm -hmm. better. The thing that bothers me about Bound, I'll be honest about this, the thing that bothers me about Bound, and I love the movie, is it would never be made with two male stars of equal stature. Mm -hmm. We would never have a caper film with two men who become lovers and try to throw things over. And in fact, if you look at any of the, the male bonding movies of, of previous generations, whether strange. it's Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid or whatever, they can be very homoerotic. But the men are very, very straight, and there's not going to be any even physical tenderness between them. Yeah, they'll never cross that line. So in that way, the male bonding, male bonding films are still stuck in gentlemen prefer blondes territory. Exactly. <laughs> so, what's your favorite of the two? My favorite is Bound. My favorite is Bound too. Ah! I love gentlemen prefer blondes, but I love Bound more. All right, I'm Brad Fraser. I'm Spencer Schunk. And we'll see you next time on... Old Movies for Young People. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. I've heard of affairs that are strictly platonic But diamonds are a girl's best friend And I think affairs that you must give a sonic A better bet If little pets get big baguettes Time rolls on And youth is gone And you can't straighten up